Hello, it's Scompy here again. I think I'm gonna do a little walk and talk today. And, oh dear. Maybe I'll just name this video, oh dear, with a D-E-E-R. All right, we'll see about that. Going down to the river, walking through melty, icy snow, and something was on my mind earlier today. I was thinking, you know, what if we were living 200 years ago in 1817 and what would the power grid look like it would look non-existent what would radio frequencies look like pretty much just your natural EMFs coming off the Sun and such um, what's expected on our bodies and then uh, you know the telegraph came along in the <clears throat> 1850s and of course the power grid started coming in in the 1890s and we all know that but we don't think about how life was different what diseases we had back then in comparison to what we have now and just all that good stuff so I was thinking okay we have a new president <clears throat> that president has a family and the president has one member in the family that I see is a lot like my own son my son is turning eight years old and Baron Trump is 10, but his behaviors and reactions to things reminds me of my own son tremendously uh, and certain um, just non-verbals he does. Uh, and my son is has definite issues with EHS and that's what I want to talk about a little bit. So I want to I want to dive into what I notice <clears throat> even in my how my current new house here in Bend, Oregon and comparing what I've just witnessed in the actual presidential inauguration and wanting to see if these are tied together um, making some connections in my own world because of being a parent a father seeing what's going on so my son, in the last week or two, he has been complaining of uh, red ears again. And I noticed that I, I, in my office, I have an electrician coming out to get rid of dimmer switches in my office. And right when the sun starts setting, and either my wife or myself, we turn on that dimmer switch within Literally five ten minutes later, my son's ears start. He, he starts complaining. The outer lobes of his ears, like you know, on the tops of his ears, feels like they're heating up to him. Now, of course, knowing my measurements, doing my measurements, um, oh, that's pretty neat. I have seen that there is an electrical EMF that comes off of my my uh, dimmer of course and that's why I'm getting them removed but the electrical like where the light is placed in the center of the room it's probably about three feet away from where his head is because it's on a chandelier up above him so I have of course not told everyone in the family not to have the dimmers on in the meantime I have it just a standard lamp over in a corner far away from him and done the testing there and it does give off a little a little bit of e uh, electrical EMF and a little bit of magnetic but it has a very fast fall off from the source compared to the chandelier that has six bulbs in it and when you turn it on you know it's like six times the EMF that comes off of it so even though I see that at his space when I measure around um, from that light all the way down, I see m my trimeter telling me that the fall off is pretty much gone by the time it hits his area. But for him, he has EHS, electrohypersensitivity syndrome, which he has more sensitivity when it comes to these electrical forces, magnet, you know, EMFs in general. So. Interesting, anyway, interesting case, you know, over the past few weeks, I've, you know, done little tests here and there. I've had, the light has gone on and then, you know, off, often he complains, the light goes off, 
then 10, 15 minutes later, he doesn't complain if he's you know sitting there in the office. So, as a general rule, I have um, I'm trying to make my way over make my way over here to this grounding rock. And it's kind of hard to do in the sound, but as a general rule, I have him um, mitigated pretty well now. And until that electrician comes out, they're, they've been bogged down here because, as you can see. It's been hard for people to travel through the snow. Um, people have been backed up, and I, it's going to be another two weeks before the electrician can just give me a straight on-off switch instead of a dimmer in the in the office. So, this is like one of many symptoms he's experienced in the past. Now, he gets really, really hydrated well because I typically every hour or two I'll go in. I won't even say a word. I'll go into the refrigerator. I'll get out like a San Pellegrino or some like mountain spring water or something like that and uh, typically he likes a teeny little bit of splash of flavor in it so I'll, I'll do a little bit of just pure concentrated either cranberry, I know it's kind of a no-no but <laughs> it's better to have him hydrated than not hydrated at all and I'll, I'll give him just a tiny tiny splash of flavor. Um, from a real source and typically it's either pomegranate or cranberry and he's good to go so uh, you know I place it in front of him and, and a lot of times now being eight years old he actually tells me when he's thirsty as well even if I am making a point to hydrate him really well so it's it's great it's um the hydration i've noticed works really really well and now that i'm in a location where i'm getting uvb sunlight even right now in january and he gets outside midday with me he has not had one cold nothing as a matter of fact this last week he started having sniffles one night in the evening and i thought it was going to be manifest into a cold so knowing that I had him ground more, I had him, um, you know, hydrate more that night, just simply hydration, and I had him back off of the foods completely. Uh, someone in my family wanted to supplement him, and I said, no, 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 this is not the time to do supplements, especially this time of night, if, if ever at all, I know you want to help him, but really what's helping him is that hydration at this point, and not giving him food, letting his body deal with what's already there and, and pulling out what it needs and not thinking food is a crutch or supplements a crutch for him to help him out and I, I don't know what would have happened but I'm guessing if he would have had a bunch of supplements and some food later at night like you know seven eight o'clock at night about an hour before he goes to sleep um, it might have actually caused him to manifest you know fully into a cold well we woke up the other morning and cold was just gone like he slept through the night no problems he started sleeping you can hear i could hear him snoring and you know a lot of stuff going through his his nasal passages and such but by the end of the morning it was hacked completely gone and of course making a point to get him outside after the fact as well so for the right sick for the right daily signaling so anyway with that's a long story and I wanted to kind of go there and make it a long story because what I notice and what I've read about Baron Trump is that he has been living in a high-rise building an entire floor for a long time um, ungrounded <clears throat> um, you know like I think in one of Trump's towers so Putting two and two together, thinking about the probably the blue light he'll be getting at night, thinking about be, he's ungrounded in this Trump Tower. Uh, who knows how many floors off the ground? I didn't mention in the article I read. Uh, and then I noticed a picture as well of Melania having a cell phone in her hand. And in that picture I saw, she was very close to grabbing Baron's hand, but it doesn't look like in the picture their hands were touching, which is kind of another clue to me, like, okay, well, mom has a cell phone. She uses it all the time. And son walking along with the son, the son isn't actually holding on to mom's hand. And in part, the break, it's, it's like <clears throat> the actual break in 
relationship there is technology. It's like a very interesting picture. I see mom and son with a cell phone between them instead of interconnecting and getting the love he needs, right? Um, which is, you know, a little bit sappy and sad on one front, but what it probably means is maybe Baron himself understands that when he's around certain electronic devices or touching them, he doesn't feel good. And he might just have that perception about him already like an EHS person does. Um, the night that Trump won the election, I actually keyed in dramatically to look at Barron because I view him as like a litmus test. I'm like, <clears throat> he, he does a lot of things my son does with EHS, so I look at him to see, okay, I know this, this, this kid is in an, just a flood of EMF. Um, you know, aside from electrical, magnetic sources, and blue light sources, I know that DC has a ton of RF in it, and, you know, they bring in the cows, which are those movable mobile phone towers, for um, the debate, or for the inauguration, and they're moving them into the, for sports events, and they're starting to move them in all over the place. So I, I just know that the, um, the density of the RF is increasing overall. So as I was looking around for seeing the result of this, it was intriguing that it said that Barron missed his father's inauguration. And he wasn't there, he wasn't present. People are asking, where's Barron, where's Barron? And he wasn't present there, I guess. Um, I could be wrong, maybe maybe one of the websites didn't see where Barron was at, but, um, or if he attended some activities after the, after the whole thing there in DC. So I'm thinking, Okay, why, from my perspective, on a biophysics front, why would an EA, why would a kid like my son with EH, with potentially EHS, now I'm, I'm guessing here, because um, there's no real way to know, right? And, unless you just really start diving into his world and seeing what's going on with it. But it makes sense from my perspective that maybe Baron had a little frustrating, uh, you know, episode issue with mom and dad um, that earlier that day when all of the RF was brought into DC. I mean, that sounds like a crazy statement to say, right? <laughs> Just like, oh, come on. What really could it be the, the RF, the EMF, everything like that? Well, I, I'm not sure, but all I know is that people that are more sensitive to it want to shy away from it and they know something's wrong when they're in it. Um, my world, right, if I get in fields for too long, I'll get either tinnitus or I'll get eye issues where um, I, I can visually start seeing problems through my vision, which is a perfect EMF gauge for me, uh, artificial EMF gauge. So that's why I'm out here grounding right now, um, because it's a nice inflammation reducer and just like, it's like sucking up, reducing my inflammation as I'm here. but. You know, like, no one that knows about the biophysics, potentially Trump might know about it a lot more now. Let's say he doesn't and, and you know, all the normal medical people aren't putting these things together as they probably aren't. They're focused on biochemistry, not biophysics. So, you know, they might be saying, well, give Baron some soothing medications or whatever, get him through the time. He needs to get through, um, you know, they might even say get him more hydrated. Uh, who knows what it is, but I, I look at the whole, the whole thing, all the connections, and I start thinking, okay, yeah, he's probably around electronics, um, probably playing video games, I don't know. Uh, definitely ungrounded, way up high in a high rise for a long time. So he probably hasn't been grounded like I'm doing right at the second. Um, he's, he's probably needs some just long-term nature time to recover, to minimize, you know, reduce down his, his EHS and increase his redox. And we have no idea what's going on on the vaccine front. I mean, Trump obviously is wanting to investigate by the people he's hiring in to, to see what, what's going to happen with the vaccines. but. You know, the way I view it now with vaccines is it, it, it's not like no, nothing's like life is so complex. Nothing's 100 percent sure a vaccine could be a catalyst to cause a, a, 
already a bad situation to go horrible really quick. But to me, it's like already if you are not embracing nature enough and you're around tech enough and you're ungrounded enough, you're dehydrated enough, you're messing up your circadian biology enough, and then you go in for your vaccine. Bam! Now the body just can't take it and it's like the thing that pushes it over the edge. So this is why I think we see, um, you know, and, and I'm just saying general generalization there too because there are definite reactions individuals have with certain vaccines and you know, for me, I would, I can't really do the vaccines on the glutamate front because I'm so sensitive there. Um, I'll, I'll most likely get eye ruptures and reactions if I were to get uh, an MSG directly um, blown into my muscle tissue because it's unfiltered, like, you know, MSG going through your gut, right? It gets filtered and it slows it down, slows the uptake it kind of trickles into the bloodstream versus you get something injected into you, there's no filtering system except for the muscle you're injecting it into. So uh, the, the burst of MSG in my system, I know would be all bad real quick. Um, that's just me. So, you know, and then all, some, from, some vaccines still have aluminum in them. Some have different compounds that, you know, people are looking into, but so, but as a general rule, like, look at the vast number of people in the population, they get vaccines and they don't have any problems. Well, I, you have to, like, look deeper. You have to look, well, are these people, you know, going to sleep at night, waking up in the morning at the right times? And are they hydrating enough? And is their diet look more balanced and less like a standard American diet? Uh, just all of these factors, it's, it's complex and to just make a straight cause and effect statement based on one thing yeah it, it could be correct but most likely it's far more complex and there's way more things going on there's way more interactions that are going on in play and it's almost as if it's like a I don't know it can be like death by a thousand paper cuts that's like the best analogy I'm thinking of right now you get um, you know, a bunch of bad uh, things all happening, synergizing at the same time, and then it goes bad really, you know, it just that last thing just kind of hits a threshold, and then it affects a certain system, right? So, you know, let's say I'm perpetually dehydrated uh, because I'm going to the gym late at night sucking up blue light, and I'm around people with their pulsing smartphones and everything else and you know I'm just getting all this extra um, non-ionizing radiation plus breaking my circadian rhythm plus being dehydrated and I do this for three months in a row and then I push it really hard one night because you know I got on the scale the, the previous day and I was up two pounds so I, I, I go an extra half hour and that extra half hour dehydrates me more and sends the body into ah panic mode and then a bunch of bad happens somewhere in the body maybe in the liver maybe in the brain you know it's like it's a big crapshoot right uh when you have a ton of factors like a death by a thousand paper guys all these things synergizing at the same time so that's how i that's how i see a lot of elements now obviously it could be just that one factor also could be the thing that sets you off and it's that really bad thing that you know leads to um, a severe injury or even death I mean like walking with your cell phone um, in this kind of area <laughs> and if you were to walk off the bridge because you're so engaged with your cell phone that's probably gonna lead to an injury or death and that's one action that <laughs> it was one action that had nothing to do with the biochem biochemistry the biophysics nothing it was just your addiction well actually it did have to do with the biophysics didn't it it was because it was your addiction to looking down and deciding to make the decision to walk with it at the same time all right you get the idea so uh where should i end this i'll just end it with with barren 
Baron Trump a little bit. Like, I, I just notice his behaviors on screen, the way he looks down, the way he stares one direction, um, just the facial expressions, his, his overall body nonverbals, leads me to believe this kid has some sort of electromagnetic sensitivity of some kind. Um, I could be wrong. I'm not saying he does. But from looking at my son and everything I've done to mitigate his world, I mentioned like the, earlier in this video, there's one thing I did to mitigate his world uh, recently, but that's probably one of 30 or 40 things. And it all contributes, you know, it's, it's like every little thing slowly adds up to a big nice bonus and it goes back to history it's like I'm almost like turning my place into what it would be to live like in 1817 instead of 2017 and that's that's kind of the full circle so I hope you enjoyed talk to you guys later see ya